Hello everybody. So it's a beautiful day to talk about the Lord. At least that's what I believe. Okay, so I was reading Jeremiah 1 through 10, uh, chapter 30. And you guys, it's so powerful. It's so powerful. And I think this is something that a lot of us need to hear right now, especially with the way the world is going. And I just think this is a great day to talk about what the Lord has to say. So let's get into prayer. Heavenly Father, um, we come before you, God, asking you for guidance, asking you to educate us, to lead us and guide us in the right directions, God. I pray that you pour into us everything that we need to know for our own journeys. I pray that you make this personal to each and every one of us individually and together. I pray that you do a work in all of our lives, God, correcting us and leading us down the right path that is pleasing to you and i know with it being pleasing to you it'll definitely be satisfying to us i pray that you let us let us let our guards down i pray that you open our ears to listen to you and open our hearts to receive what you have for us and to hold on to it i pray our hearts are good ground i pray against any distractions any plans of the enemy we go ahead and cancel that now in the name of Jesus, God. And I just pray that you just pour into your people as you always do. Open our eyes to see the message you have for us, God. And let us do what only you can do through us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 So let's get started. I hope every one of you learned the lesson from last time. Have your Bible with you i am going to be reading from the king james version i personally like the king james version because it's the closest to the original <laughs> original but uh, closer to the original version every other bible starts changing things i have read a couple um of passages through the american standard i think it's the new american standard version which is pretty similar like they're literally kind of just changing um one word to what that word means instead of changing the whole sentence um so i like the king james version personally i wish i could read the other languages so i could read the actual um one but whatever i take what i can get the closest will do and so um that's what i'm gonna be reading from jeremiah chapter 30 and um yeah let's talk about what the lord got for us so it starts off and it says the word that came to jeremiah from the lord saying Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write these, I mean, write thee, <laughs> all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. So he's telling him, Write everything I am telling you in a book. And then it says, For thou, I mean, for lo, the days come, says the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, says the Lord, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. And so the land he's talking, he's talking about is um, the land that God had promised to Abraham. So that's the land he's talking about because... God had promised that Abraham's seed would receive the covenant that um, he made with um, Abraham. So that's what he's talking about. And these are the words that the Lord spec concerning Israel and concerning Judah. For thus says the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Mm. So the Lord is saying, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask ye now, and, uh, and, sh and see whether a man does travail with child. 
uh, wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loin as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness. So tra travail is pain. And so with God saying, like, you know, a woman, because he says, where do I see every man with his hands on his loin as a woman in travail? It's like a woman of pain. And so when you say your hands on it, so now we're going to think of a pregnant woman when she's going through all those pains during laboring, right? Or not even necessarily laboring, just when she's in pain. And you know how a lot of times women, when they're pregnant, they'll hold their, their stomachs, their belly, and sometimes cuff even under it. So God is talking about... Um, he sees men, you know, even with their hands um, and like on their stomach and just pain, okay, in pain. And the pain is so deep that he says we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. And then he says all faces are turned into paleness so these people are like you know like in in pain and then we're thinking you know he's talking about the jews so he he ain't talking about white folks he's talking about tanner folks so for their face to be pale you know they're scared you know, or, or dying even um so it says after that he says alas <laughs> For that day is great. <laughs> oh, you guys, I'm just laughing because God is so good. <laughs> like, even though these things are happening, God is saying, and even though those things will happen, God is saying, for that day is great, so that none is like it. And also remember, he's going back to him saying that I will bring again the captivity of my people. Okay, and... And then he says, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. So even though all these things are happening, God is like the goal of it. The fact that he's going to free them and answer their cries is going to be a great day. Like, doesn't that make you excited that God enjoys saving us no matter what? Because if we know a lot about Israel anyways you know that's a place where they're worshiping idols where you know they are sacrificing their children and drinking their blood and all these other things so you know this is them and it's like it, even though they're doing all these things against God they're crying out to him and he's excited to free them and not necessarily even saying that it's um he's talking about specifically the things that i've said about israel um but just saying like that these are the people he's talking about so that'll go again to tell you guys that it doesn't matter what you've been through the moment you cry out to god he's coming and so anyways then he says um Okay, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, <laughs> but he shall be saved out of it. God is good. Like, even, even though Jacob, this is going to be the time of Jacob's trouble, and if we know anything about Jacob, he's the song of Isaac, the son of Isaac, and his brother's Esau, and we know he stole his or maybe we don't know um but he stole his brother's birthright when he was hungry when his brother was hungry he made him sell that um and also he stole his brother's blessings like a lot of things happen with um jacob then he fears his brother because of that years later and a lot a lot happened to jacob but god is like even though he's gonna go through all that he shall be saved up out of it he shall be saved out of it so listen to that even though he knows jacob is gonna get into some mess god is saying but he's gonna be saved out of it and god's gonna help him anyways and then it says for it shall come to pass that day says the lord of hosts that i will break his yoke from off thy neck 
and will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. But they shall serve the Lord their God, their God. Okay, not the universe, y'all. God, okay, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, God, okay? God. But they shall serve the Lord their God, and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. Girl, y'all, all of this is just... It's just so good it's so good y'all because if you know about david the shepherd boy right the guy who um his father jesse overlooked him when samuel was coming to anoint the children you know looking for a king and who he's looking for is who god is talking about when god says i have found a man after my own heart you know and david's out in the shepherd's field and um and Samuel goes in and he's like looking at Jesse's son and God told him though don't look at man's appearance because God looks at the heart and so he's like is there any more sons and he's like Jesse's like well there is one he's young and he's out in the shepherd's field but anyways besides that God is already saying and he will raise up David. And this is before David's even anointed, okay? Because at this time, somebody else is king. He's not even king yet. Saul's not even king yet. And that's powerful because, you know, people would think like, oh, you know, um, David was just a, a rebound for Saul because Saul messed up um, David became king but in actuality david was always going to be king you know and and that could go towards you know people sometimes um you know in your life where people are just like oh yeah well you just got that because so and so didn't show up and da -da -da -da, like you're not qualified right but the thing is is when you are qualified in god's eyes it doesn't matter what anyone says. It doesn't matter what happens. If you are in alignment, meaning you're not one foot in, one foot out, but you dived into God, God will move heaven and earth to get you to where he needs you to be for the appointed time. Because as we know, when David gets anointed, he's young. When he gets appointed, he's way older, in his 30s. You know, so therefore... Life is going to happen, but David was, you know, he was a man of many mistakes, but he was also a man who repented a lot. He was a man with a pure heart after God. Like, no matter what, his heart was clean and his heart was pure. So it's like God already had plans for David. Already had plans for David. And he already had plans for, for Jacob. And as we know, you know, they went through a lot, but... When it's the appointed time, can't can't nothing stop what God has. And that that's the beauty of it. You can kind of mess that up. I, I do believe that um that you can mess it up. And I believe that if you do turn your back on God and, and you get stuck in the world and and you cut God up and 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 that even goes for you know just like yeah um thank you God for you know I couldn't have done this without God da -da -da -da, but but your heart doesn't mean it that's an issue but anyways whatever so then 10 says therefore fear therefore fear thou not O my servant Jacob says the Lord Neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, for lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity, and Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest, and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. And then even here, this just goes back to, because this is, let's remember, this is what God is telling Jeremiah. And... Listen to this, as we know, you know, because there's a moment where Jacob and um, 
Jesus, God, they're fighting. And Jacob is saying, holding on to God, and they've been wrestling all night. And he's saying, you know, I won't let you go until you bless me. And God's way of blessing him was changing his name and saying, you will no longer be Jacob. And I forget what Jacob means. Mm -hmm. But you will be Israel. And in and, and here, God is even telling this to uh Jeremiah, he's saying, Therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, says the Lord, neither be dis dismayed, O Israel. You know? So he's even calling him Israel and letting us know, you know, because all of these things, all of these things that we are, are listening to are way before these things are even taking place. And... You know, I just wanted to talk to you guys about giving it to God, you know, and, and, and trusting God. Like, you know, here, before I even get into that, let me, let me get to where I'm going. Okay, Jeremiah 1. Let's be realistic here. Society wants us all to think, like, this is how something's supposed to be done. This is the only way this can be done and then they want to put statistics with it then they want to put age requirements on it and they want to limit us and that's what the world wants to do and the truth of the matter is none of that matters like if you are in a state in your life and you don't know what are you called for what is your purpose do you have meaning if you're in that place of like confusion give it to god give it to god because you don't have to have it all figured out you don't you really don't check this out if you don't believe me check this out go to jeremiah one uh, chapter one is what i'm saying and then go to verse five before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou comest, thou comest out, comest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. This is what God said to Jeremiah. And as we go to 30, God is giving Jeremiah insight, right? But listen though, before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. Meaning a spirit up in heaven. I knew you. I knew you. And before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified you. And I ordained you a prophet unto the nations. God knew. And, you know, sometimes we think like, oh, we have to have this resume. Like, we have to do this in order to get this job. But, but let's be realistic. Okay, as we are reading, it says, um, here it says, uh, I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. Abraham. Did we ever read about Abraham praying to God, saying, God, let me be a man of many nations, a father to many nations. Did he ask God that? And then let's be realistic. Did David ever cry out to God and say, God, let me be a king? And then did they ever go filling out resumes and or going to do every job they can do just to feel like they're doing something? Or were they just faithful with what God gave them and listened to what God was telling them to do? Understand attached to great callings, right? Attached to being chosen. You have to be obedient. Let's be realistic. You have to be and you have to really have a relationship with God in order to have what God ordained you to be. 
without sorrows, right? Because every good and perfect gift comes from God, meaning you won't have to sell your body to do it and sleep with such and such to get a higher position or rob somebody to get money so you can pay your rent or whatever. This is what I'm talking about. Because when we start talking about these things, right? Now we're talking about the things you have to do to get the worldly things. You have to do worldly things to get the worldly gift, right? And that comes with if we really want to take it there, <laughs> that comes with getting it the way the devil wants you to have it. That means making, you know, covenants with the devil to get those things. Because if it's coming with anxiety, if it's coming with stress, if it's coming with suicidal thoughts, if it's coming with depression, that's of the devil. Those are the fruits of the devil. The fruits of God. Come on, it's peace, it's love, right? It's self-control. I mean, it's a lot of things up in there, but ain't none of them negative. I mean, it says long-suffering, but that means for Jesus Christ's sake, not, you know, depressed and you don't know what to do and, and you hear these voices that are just dragging you down. That's not what it's saying. It's, it means to be prosecuted for God's sake, for the sake of Jesus. If we want to be Christians and we want to live like Jesus, then we're going to have to go through some of the things Jesus went through, meaning talking to people about God and them not receiving it and, and attacking us and calling us liars and you know, those types of things, but not like you can't pay your rent because God is a good God. He's going to help you figure it out. But the thing is, I guess we could say, who do you trust? Do you trust God or do you trust the devil? Because everything you get from him comes with a praise, comes with a praise. And, you know, I'm saying all this to really just say, trust God because he knows you. He knows who you are. He knows the gifts in you. He knows you. And he can tell you everything about you. He can get you to where you need to be. Now, I'm not saying this means sit back, don't do nothing, don't work. I'm not saying that because labor is required. But I'm saying, God already knows you before he put you in a womb of your mother. He knew you. Like, even here, like, Jacob, right? He already knew Draco Jacob. Jacob. Jacob was going to be bad. He already knew he was going to steal his uh, brother's blessings. Like, he already knew all these things. Jacob was going to do, but God already had the end plan, but he going to be all right. He's going to be saved. And before, you know, Jesse overlooks David, God is already saying, but they shall serve the Lord their God, that's in him, and David their king, whom I will raise up unto, unto them. things are already ordained they're already gonna happen and then god saying to jeremiah like i ordained you i made you a prophet unto the nations come on david's brothers oh my brothers we're hating on him but God still had a plan for him. Even though he was overlooked, God still had a plan for him. Even though he felt disqualified, God had a plan for him. Even though Jacob felt like he wasn't worthy. Even though Jacob felt like he wasn't going to be blessed unless he stole the blessing. Even though Jacob felt like he wasn't, you know, understood or felt like he wasn't approved or even qualified as well. Right? Because if he felt he was. He wouldn't have stole his brother's blessing. He wouldn't have stole his brother's birth certificate. Come on. His birthright. 
He wouldn't have. But the, he didn't know himself. He didn't know God. Because if he knew God, he would know. All you gotta do is ask. All you gotta do is trust me. All you gotta do is seek me. I already know. I already have plans for you. You know, and I've also heard some preachers preach like, you know, like Esau was never supposed to get the blessing or else um, Jacob wouldn't have got it, but it's not true. He sold it because he didn't know who he was. Yeah, he read it on paper, but did he believe? Don't we know the Bible says that if you believe, these things will happen? If you have faith, these things will happen? Come on, this is what happens with people who don't know who they are, right? But if you know God has a plan for you and all you have to do is trust the plan, all you have to do is talk to God, all you got to do is get in the right with God, he'll give you everything, everything. He will give you open heaven. Listen, and if you don't believe me, I got another, I got another verse for you. Deuteronomy. Y'all, I am in this basement, and it is cold. It should be making my nose run. That is why I am in a sweater, okay? Because it is cold out here. I mean, I bet you it was cold where I live anyways. It is cold where I live anyway. So here we go. Mm, and 12. So listen to this. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasures, the heaven to give the rain unto the land in his season, and to bless all the works of thy hands. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. So let's, let's just say this. The Lord shall open unto you his good treasures, the heaven to give the rain unto your land in his season, and to bless all the work of your hand, and you shall lend unto many nations, and you shall not borrow. God has plans for all of us. For all of us. God wants all of us. Many are called, few are chosen. Who are the chosen? The ones who answer the call. Who are, cho who are chosen? The obedient ones. Who are chosen? The one who really want to please God. And you can't say that there's anybody in this Bible who listen to the Lord and their stories aren't great. You can't say that. You can't say that. And then if you want to say, oh, well, Job. Nah, Job was doing so well that God stopped the devil and said, hey, why don't you check out Job? Why? Because, yes, there will be trials and tribulations. God got to test the heart. He's still there. Although he knows, but sometimes it's to wake us up to get us in right standing with him. Sometimes we can get too comfortable. But then what happens? God gives Job more than what he had. He blessed him exceedingly, abundantly more but these things come with obedience with surrendering with giving your heart to god like god you know i don't i don't know who i am i don't know what you see in me i don't know why you even created me but i want to know can you tell me and he will don't let the devil fool y'all because mm, everything negative, all that condemning stuff is the devil. Whenever you're hearing all these, uh, you ain't never good enough. When you start to be jealous of other people, that's the devil too. If God thought you needed what this person had, why didn't he just give it to you? Why didn't he just put it in you? God is a... A God who takes his time. I mean every stroke 
on the eyebrows, in the eyes, in the, the mouth, in your hair, everything about you, everything is detailed. He knows the numbers of hairs in your head. He took his time on you. He didn't just say your name and then all these things just appeared. No, he took his time. The world, he said, let there be light and there was light. But he took his time on you. His time. Your personality. Come on. He took his time. Any moles you have, any, <laughs> anything you have on you. He took his time. He knew you before you were in your mother's womb. That's powerful. And he knows you're going to have trouble with this and that. But he said you'll be all right. And who is he talking to? His children. He's talking to his children. So if things don't feel right, ask yourself. Are you even in God's family? Because he has an inheritance for his children. Are you going to get that? Ask yourself. Think of these things. Because God's children will inherit the land. God's children have dominion over the earth. God's children, there are promises. Promises for God's children. And the great thing is, is that you ain't got to be perfect to be his child. You just got to want him to be your father. And God will get you with the right people. I mean, he will make things happen. This isn't even like you got to figure it out. God ain't a hustle for it kind of God. God is a let me be God kind of God. Be still. Let me be God. Know that I am God. That's the kind of God we serve. God says, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. And then everything will be added to it. He asks of two things. Seek his kingdom first and his righteousness. Meaning getting your life together. And how do you get your life together? By surrendering your life to God. By being a sacrifice. A living sacrifice for God. Being an open vessel for God. Just be willing and be empty. You know. And, and, and be open to learning what he has for you. Breaking religious religion on all of you because God is not a God of religion. Let's just get that straight. God got plans for you. Even if you don't know it, he got plans for you. And if you want to know, a lot of it is in the Bible. He has plans. You're not forgotten. You're not. You're just not spending time with him. That's all. That is all. All right, you guys. So that is all I got for you guys today. I uh, just wanted to let you guys know you're chosen, you're called, you're blessed, you're favored. Come on. God's got grace for you. God is slow to anger. God is a God that wants to give you all the gifts he can give you. But he's also a God who wants you to, to get it together. And that's okay. Because even your parents want you to get it together. And if you're a parent, you want your kid to get it together. So it's okay. It is okay. Let's just get it together. We're not going to be perfect. We know that. But we can be perfect in God's eyes. I mean, if he can call Abraham perfect, why can't he look at us and say, you're perfect. You're perfect. Because we are. He didn't make a mistake when he created us. He didn't. We're sanctified. We're holy. It's we got into the world. And we let the world rip off everything God put on us. And then we let the world label us. And tell us what God called unique is weird. We let the world label, label us. We let the enemy pour into us and in our childlike faith get pulled out of us and get us around people who are like, oh, you haven't experienced life yet. Or, or oh, you got too much faith. Life's not like that. But what did God say? What did he say? You believe 
it shall be given unto you. That's what he said. We just got to get back to the basics. Get, go back to the garden. Go back to who God called us to be in the beginning and take the world up out of us. And how do we do that? Like I said in the previous video, you know, don't conform to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And, and that don't mean read books. It doesn't mean watch YouTube videos. It doesn't mean watch TV. It doesn't mean ask people, who are you? It means spend time in the Bible. It means spend time with God. Because when you know God, you know yourself. You know your identity. Can't nobody tell you nothing. And now that's not arrogant. To be like, no, I know. God got a plan for me. No, I know I'm destined for more. No, I know I am the head and not the tail. God says that. He said that in Deuteronomy, y'all. Just, well, I believe it's 13. Um, well, 28, 13. Hold on, yeah, I got to go back to them pages. So, it says it here. Okay. And the Lord shall make you, I'm changing, okay, it says thee. But, and the Lord uh, shall make thee the head and not the tail. crazy to me you guys sometimes because people want to tell us who we are but don't even know what god has for us and he says that because he says no eye has seen no ear has heard neither has it entered into a man's heart the plans god has for us you know what i'm saying so we don't know that's why i was oh you know even when i was like in the world world making my worldly music right um, and if somebody didn't want to work with me, if somebody didn't want to play my music here, if somebody didn't want to do that, I didn't care. You know, I talk to God about it and move along because I'm like, there, there's other ways to get there. There's other ways to get there. And, and that person, not the only way, because I know who I serve, and I serve a God who split the Red Sea. I serve the God of Isaac. I serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I serve the God of David. So, I know God gonna make a way. I don't care who's telling me no. Who's saying this couldn't happen? This will never happen. I don't care because I know who I am. And I know who I am as in I know I'm the daughter of Christ. I am the daughter of God. I am the daughter of Jesus. Come on, and the Holy Spirit lives in me. I am a temple, a home to the Holy Spirit. There ain't nothing I can't do. Nothing. God said, these hands are blessed. Everything I touch will prosper. Come on, God said, I am the head and not the tail. Come on. God said, we will lend to nations. We won't borrow. I'm just saying, we're not worried about what people think. We're not. We're worried about who God is and what God says. Not the devil, because he likes to talk a lot of smack. But the good thing is we are covered in the blood of Jesus. And we serve a God. Come on, y'all. This means the top. Ain't nobody above him. Nobody equal to him. Everything is under him, including the devil. Principalities, powers. I mean, all this is under him. And Jesus sits to the right hand, to his right hand, to his right side. Jesus does. And if you have the Holy Spirit, you have the same living power that was in Jesus on your side. Come on, when before Jesus went on to heaven, he said that I must go so you can get the Holy Spirit, the comforter, our guidance. And think about it, it's a blessing because if Jesus was here on earth, we'd be chasing, trying to find Jesus. But instead, he distributed so we can all have him all at the same time with different issues. Like, it's not like I can, I'm talking to God and then you got to wait till I'm done. No, you can talk to him right now. We could all talk to him right now, but different things and he 
come through for all of us. He'll talk to all of us. But do you have ears to listen? Do you have a heart to receive? Do you have a willing mind to surrender to him in his truth? That's the thing. Mm. Anyway, y'all. God is good. God is great. God is magnificent. Mm. I'm so happy I get to call him my father. You can call him your father too. You can save and give your life to Jesus Christ. You believe he's the son of God. There's a sinner prayer up in here. And, and I might have to, you know, read that to y'all another day. But you can. And if you were like, God, what do you mean? The universe is in charge of this. The moon. Have y'all ever sat back and asked? God, if you're real, show yourself to me. God, if everything I believe is wrong, show me. Nine times out of ten, people don't ask that because they don't want to know the truth. They want to fit in. But ask yourself, because he'll tell you. He'll show you. He ain't got no problem. I ain't even got to tell you. I ain't got to prove nothing to you. That's not my job because God can speak for himself God can show up for himself God can perform miracle signs and wonders all by himself I am just a servant of his proudly I am his daughter made in his image proudly and the best gift I've ever received was him and him alone, God and God alone, along with, you know, the whole Trinity and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Best. Nothing compares to it. Nothing. So, I hope you guys were blessed like I was blessed reading this. And every time, you know, I'm spending time with God, I am blessed. And I hope you guys are blessed as well which i'm sure you will be as long as you got ears to listen and a heart to understand and to care let's let's close this out in prayer you guys heavenly father we just thank you for the word that you gave us all today god i just pray that it manifests as god and that we spend time in it and we see your glory through it god and we see what happens when we serve a god like you god i pray that you pull out any of the seeds that the enemy has planted in our minds and in our hearts god i pray you uproot them and i pray that you put your truth within us god and that you take our heart of stone and turn it into a heart of flesh God, we repent for the sins we commit day out and day in, knowingly and unknowingly. We ask for your truth, God. And then we ask for the boldness to speak your truth, God. To be soldiers in your army, God. In the kingdom of heaven. To fight for your kingdom, God. To pray that your kingdom be here on earth as it is in heaven. God, and I pray that through us, we can bring heaven on earth, God. Through us, God, your glory will be shown. Through us, God, many lives will be saved. And through us, God, we will make this world a better place, ripping apart the kingdom of the enemy, God. I pray for your divine protection, your wisdom and your knowledge and your love. I pray that you show yourself to everybody on this chat and watching this, God. I just pray that you open their eyes, God, and show them who you are. Not who they've heard about, but who you really are. Let them have a hunger for you and your truth. A hunger, God, to get to know you and the Holy Spirit and Jesus, God. I just pray, God, that you make ways out of no ways, God, and any child of yours or anybody that is listening through this that is going through something, I pray that you bless them with peace, God, with the peace only you can give them and the answers that they need to make the right decision and give them the grace to turn from the, their wicked ways and to choose your ways, God. We thank you and we are humbled by you and your truth. 
Help us to always be humble to your word and to your truth. In your most loving name, in the name of Jesus, we pray, amen, the matchless name of Jesus, amen. All right, y'all, y'all be blessed. Have a beautiful and blessed day. I feel like I keep saying that, so y'all must be needing to receive that in your souls. Go be great. Ask God to show himself to you today. And come back and, and tell me what he's told you. Mm, and I rebuke any of y'all being used by the devil, trying to create problems. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Y'all be blessed. Have a good one. Bye.